Uh-huh. Here we go. Hello, Sandy. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Miriam. Oh, I'm trying to figure out how to close that box. Great. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> good morning. I'm good. I'm really curious and excited about this interview because for me, it's a never done before to have a conversation with someone who actually sat on the other side of the table um, as a client of a facilitated process. And I have lots of questions. And before we're getting there, I'm still curious to hear from you whether you would consider yourself a facilitator. Well, uh, good morning, uh, Miriam. It's nice to be here and I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to chat through you know, what we were attempting to do in this uh, project endeavor, however we want to refer to it. Um, do I consider myself a facilitator? I, I don't in this in, in this per, per particular um, initiative. I would say I've been I've been engaged in work as a facilitator on a number of occasions over over the last uh, ten or fifteen years. Um, but in in this particular project, my role was more related to the design and conception of the of the program and bringing together the people who were going to be able to uh, support our organization in this sort of explorative um, nature of what we were doing. So certainly my role wasn't facilitation within any given workshop. I was an attendee and a, a loose contributor when I had the opportunity. And the client. And the client. <laughs> Yes, That's a big one. I was a client, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, I was a, yeah, I was a stakeholder of, of probably a bit of significance in the project. Yeah. Yes. And you mentioned that um, you have worked as a facilitator um, in the past 15 years. Sure. So what does facilitation mean to you? Yeah, so for, for me, I, I think that, um, you know, facilitation is about, it's about guiding or supporting um, the, the, the navigation uh, of a group uh, around a given sort of framework concept process. So it's about ideas and how we can, uh, you know, explore those ideas and, you know, so either enriching our understanding, I mean, a broad range of, of, of outputs. But, uh, so I really see that, that role as, additive to a group in terms of um, how you draw greater meaning or improve progress, you know, some sort of, mm. um, some sort of uh, positive impact on the ability of a group to progress around an idea, concept or process. I didn't do that in this, in, in, in this project, but I uh, have done it in the past, mostly in a strategy context. Yeah. And still it, um, it gave you enough kind of, background understanding to know that you, you were looking for a facilitator, an external facilitator for that project. Maybe you can um, give the audience a little bit of context. What was the project you were embarking on? Um, and why were you looking for an external facilitator for that? Sure. Yeah. So um, the project, which we called On Purpose, um, was focused on, on exploring organizational purpose in terms of what that meant to our people. Uh, in in uh, our organization, I work for a, for a business called uh, Insights Learning and Development. You know, we're in the learning and development space and you know, um, a big part of, our, of what we do is, 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 is built around a psychometric profile called discovery. Um, the context was that uh, it appeared that we have a, a strong connection to our purpose statement. You know, we perceive ourselves to be a, a purpose-led organization. Our customers uh, seem to also, and along with, you know, facilitators within our broader, broader network. I had thought that was interesting in my interactions with the organization. I'd been connected with them as a consultant uh, prior to, to joining the organization as a, as a director. And I was, I was curious, you know, was there some latent energy that, 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 that could be released, you know, in this, in this space that, that, that might have a positive impact on 
you know, our range of stakeholders, our people, our clients, and, and, and so on, if we could explore this in a more meaningful way. Um, also, I would say that the context we were in, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty on sort of volatility at that point. If we're, we're talking kind of December through March you know, of 2021 and into this year, you know, we're coming out of lockdown. You know, that had been a difficult you know, transition for a lot of people. I, I, I had some concerns about how that might affect our people. Um, the, the labor market was challenging. Um, so we'd seen attrition, you know, at much higher rates than mm. we'd seen historically. Uh, so, you know, it appeared that we had this connection. Um, I wondered, could we do more with this connection? And um, I'd noted that, you know, when you started to, ask people about it you know they were really connected with it but they find it hard to sort of engage in a dialogue around you know what what they felt about it or what it meant to them or what it looked like even you know and um, so i felt that uh, there was an opportunity to explore that in a way that while exploring it we might deepen the connection so that's mm. probably what brought us to shaping a project yeah and when I hear exploration, mm -hmm. I hear a creative process without a specific goal or expected outcome, mm -hmm. which is quite unusual, I would say, if you hire someone to design and to accompany a process. What was your expected outcome or what, what was your expected goal of this project when would you know that okay you can celebrate that oh <laughs> it's done yeah no that's a that's a brilliant question i think because that 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 was one of the that was quite a significant challenge um within the project because you're right it's fundamentally it was about exploration and i found you know there was a, a structural tendency and um, both in our population and with external facilitators that, 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 that I spoke to, um, that they were looking for some kind of clear set of you know, intended outcomes, uh, which I was particularly resistant to um, in, this, uh, in this project. And, and, and that probably leads me a little bit around you know, how we selected you know, an external uh, facilitator and, and you know, what this, what the mechanisms we decided to, to to engage in because i did find that people kept saying you know so what next you know what are you going to do with this what are you going to you know when you get to the outcome what are you going to do with it to which you know i find myself repeatedly saying well i don't know what the outcome is so i don't know what i'm going to do with it <laughs> um which was was a bit curious and and led to some interesting conversations internally as well um for me, like an explorative endeavor like this, uh, yes, we had some high level goals, which were basically some were kind of processual rather than outcome. You know, they were about, um, you know, we want to have a meaningful exploration. You know, we, we, we want to deepen our connections um, you know, with, with, with our organizational purpose. And um, I had, a, I suppose, a a sense that uh, given our context as a learning development company and our specific purpose, which was to create a world where people truly understand themselves and others and are inspired to make a positive difference in everything they do, there would be some element of progression around how we understood learning in the organization. So I had those sort of three very high level goals, but ne ne never, defined the, never defined intended outcomes. I was looking for mechanisms that might enable us to, I suppose, free our people in some way, um, you know, from more sort of routinized, you know, habitual thinking patterns, which is, you know, is, is not easy um, and considered a, a, a few um, potential options. And, and, and that brought me to Lego Serious Play as a, as, as a, mm -hmm. um, as a chosen tool, which, I was attracted to, but I didn't know very much about because it, it appeared um, to enable participants uh, to sort of break, break out of that sort of habitual thinking just because of the specific mechanisms of 
building, you know, manifesting meaning. With Using your, your hands. Exactly. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, you know, a sort of more cognitively led, if you like. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I started to, to, to talk to you a, a range of different, um, different potential facilitators in that space. I ended up uh, working with a, a fellow called Sean Blair. I think you've, you've, you've um, come across before. Yes, he's been on the show. Yeah, I, I understand. Uh, yeah, he, he, and he, he did a truly excellent job. And one of the, th it was even a challenge with Sean, I think at times to be saying, I, you know, yes, I want you to design a, 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 you know, a workshop. Yes, I want you to design a sort of enhanced mechanism, but no, I don't want you to commit to any outputs because I don't want to commit to any outputs and I don't want you to focus on any because I perceive that we, once we've made that decision, everything starts to become shaped around those outputs. Mm. And for me, if it's truly explorative and we're accepting that we don't know what we're going to find, I don't want any energy going towards, uh, you know, narrowing a focus towards a particular set of outcome, uh, outcomes. Sorry, I want all the expertise and energy and, and experience of, of, of Sean. And we also used a, um, an internal facilitator who is really steeped in our company history called, called Stella Hollett, who was wonderful also. And um, have all of their efforts focused on digging as deep with our people as we could into their purpose and none of them on producing an outcome. So that's, that's how we went about it. And I find it fascinating because usually when I think about it, it's usually the other way around that the client would say, okay, these are the expected outcomes. How are you going to measure the process? How do I know that you're a good facilitator? And then facilitators are rather in the role of, oh, but we don't know what the outcome is. On the other hand, we, it helps us to design a process by knowing what the finish line is at Correct. least supposed to be. Yeah. And I would be curious how your how your people actually reacted to this vagueness. Because yeah. um, if I understand it correctly, you involved everyone in the organization. How how many are we talking about? Yeah, so we, we like we're circa 500, 550, you know, on a given day. Um, and the, the goal uh, was part of our goals around how we, we wanted to approach the, 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 the project was that everyone got a voice. You know, we didn't quite manage that. I think we got 83% of the organization uh, completed the workshop. So, I mean, it was it was significant, you know, um, and we, we, we really did try and get everyone. But um, it, some of our people were skeptical, I would say, is fair, you know. Um, skeptical about the method, skeptical about the project to some extent, you know, because despite that connection with purpose, every day they come into work and, 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 and you know, there are challenges, you know, system related challenges, challenges, you know, with, with the, the process that don't unfold in the way that we hope, things that come up, you know, all the kind of stuff that we all live with in the working environment, you know, where people feel gosh, investment should be going into fixing this stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say we had we had probably a group who were excited. We had a group who were a bit on the fence and we had a group who were a bit skeptical. But at the end of uh, the, the project, I think 86% of our people who, you know, in, um, were engaged believed that the, the, the project moved them closer and, and gave them deeper ties to our purpose. So... Uh, I, a common feedback was, I was a bit skeptical about this, but actually when I got in and started doing it, it you know, it was, I could see what you were trying to achieve, mm. um, which was, which was great. We talked a lot about, we used that metaphor a lot um, about uh, the James Webb telescope, which you mm -hmm. may be familiar with. And um, so one of the points I was trying to make to, you know, a, a management structure, you know, who is sort of dominated by kind of extroverted thinking when you, go into the language of, of our product um, look what i'm saying is we're going to we're going to put the james webb our equivalent of the james webb telescope up there because what we can see from there we can't see from here right mm, beautiful and, but we don't we don't know what we're going to see because we've yeah. never been up there you know? yeah so what i'm asking you to do is come with us on this journey to go up there and let's have a look at what we can see you know and 
um, to jump on the um, on the train of uh, speaking the your language um, sure. of the profiles. You yeah. said that there was a subgroup who did not participate and who thought that why are we spending resources on this if we could spend them differently? So if you look at the entity of your employees, is it a personality profile that remain skeptical and you couldn't get on board or what do they have in common yeah wait that's a good question because I, I i'm not i'm not 100 sure and maybe i didn't um quite articulate that accurately the majority of people who couldn't attend couldn't attend because of you know holidays or being on sick leave or something you know something like that there was very 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 few that you know that just did not want to attend mm -hmm. and that number was 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 so small that i never actually you know d dug into you know was there preference implications around it um there may have been some preference you know um implications around you know people with a more uh, you know percep perception sort of orientated uh, view on whether they got the idea initially you know um but i saw quite a pretty consistent transition you know um with the, with, with those individuals you know who are much more sort of led by their senses when they got into the room and they started building with lego they, like they really came on with it you know um what, what one of the, the sort of interesting transitions that you see in that type of workshop and i'm sure there's a bunch of other mechanisms that would achieve this is that you know, when you start building a Lego model, you know, for something like your own purpose, and, and this was an important part, we, we wanted people to explore their own purpose, and we wanted to explore, you know, meaning around our purpose, and then try and understand to what extent it was shared consensus and, and dissensus and so on. And you, you tend to start by, you, you think, Sean would say, you have a meeting with yourself, you know, you mm -hmm. think about what is it I'm going to build, and you try and build it. And um, but you transition to starting to build without quite knowing what you're building. And that would be that sort of thinking with your hands transition, I think, that, that, that I saw, and that seemed to be you know, significant. And within the, the, the group who you know, were, were strongly led by, by their senses, by perception, you know, I probably saw that you know, even more clearly, you know, because initially they were like not clear about why exactly we want to do this and then they start doing it and then they feel right okay I, mm. I, I get it this is making sense I'm making sense of it by doing it uh, so yeah the, 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 it's an interesting way to look at your organization because in our organization 500 plus you know it's quite balanced actually across the four leading color energies you know in our system um, but the management structure tends to have like a higher degree of what we call fiery red so um, could you just for the audience that. who might not be familiar with the four colors could you just yeah. give us a quick intro? yeah of course of course in fact and i'll 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 i'll, I'll look at my my handy ready <laughs> that i have that i have here so yeah you know fiery red you know so it's, it's, it would be you know so if you lead with a fiery red energy is the way the language you tend to use they tend to be you know action orientated a bit more fast-paced, focused. You know, these are the the, 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 sort, the sort of characteristics that we see. Um, if you're more uh, towards sunshine yellow, and um, if you're in the sunshine yellow quadrant of our wheel, because everybody kind of sits in a wheel, um, what we see is very social. You know, um, dynamic, uh, quite interactive. You know, it's an extroverted feeling, if you like. Moving round to earth green, where you know, this is a, you know, introverted feeling and, uh, you know, we would see sort of reliable, supportive, you know, sometimes uh, pace is, 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 is a little slower in, in, in that versus sort of like a fiery red preference. And then you know, our last one, which is, you know, introverted thinking, uh, we call cool blue energy and, you know, tend to be much more structured, consistent, you know, objective, you know, so these are sort of, characteristics that relate to mm -hmm. um, the, the color energies and uh, there's no good or bad you know color energies it's, it's, it's not about that it's about preference 
Um, but we we did see that sort of play out to some extent within the um, within the project, and uh, you know that's that's an important part of who 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 we are as an organisation. And you know, thinking about inc- you know inclusion and diversity, this is a interesting inclusion and diversity lens for us also. You know, absolutely. So, um, so it adds, you know, it's a combination of, of of these different color energies. I guess everyone brings their unique gifts to the party and what we're trying to do is 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 establish you know um put this put the sort of collective commitments that we can engender within that group potentially yeah. are and this first step was around discovering those you know and so i asked about how you enrolled all the all the staff members um mm-hmm. and the other question would be, how did the rest of the leadership team react to that? Because yeah. especially when you when you say they're um, they're rather red, so they're action oriented, maybe goal oriented. Their leadership team for good reason, and sure. then you come along and say, "Oh, I had this idea. Why don't we do a workshop series on purpose using Lego?" Sure. Without a specific <laughs> outcome. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, yeah, no, it's, it's a good question, you know. So, yeah, I mean, we, we have got quite a s- s- strong um, preference towards fire red in the leadership community. That that, that that's true, and that, that that's all always the way we, we tend to articulate it because it is a sort of dynamic thing. It's not it, it's it's not um, it's not fixed. You know, people can access any any color energy, but certainly, yes, what you describe happened. I, pro- I probably wouldn't just. Disc- say it was it was my, my my idea just 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 for fairness because you know it was it, it was an idea that had been developing um over a period of time i've been working with the chief exec uh, fiona logan who had we had talked about you know how do we so how do we potentially influence or, or get into a conversation about like what value creation means and how that links to our purpose and our why um, so yes, it, it, it was a challenge. What the way we approached it was, uh, we, we had a few um, presentations early on about the ideas, you know, the, about the concepts that we were attempting to play with, you know, because you know we we, we tended to communicate value in, in a fairly orthodox way as an organization. You know, we looked at, you know, we looked at revenues and profitabilities and all these things that are. That are, that are really very important you know we, we need to be financially sustainable you know um and the, the, something uh andy lothian who's, who's, who's a group group chief exec said to me a few years ago that's often stuck in my head is you know it's like it's a like profit can be a bit like oxygen you know it's it, it doesn't get you out in the bed out of bed in the morning but it's tough to get through the day without it you know so <laughs> these things are these things are really important and um, so trying to move into a space where we were sort of exploring this idea that if our people are really connected to purpose and why you know maybe we should be thinking about sort of you know re-conceptualizing ideas around performance and value creation in the context of purpose so we, we did we had a couple of sessions like that with the exec and um, where probably there was a bit of well i'm not quite sure what you mean here <laughs> you know and um, but they kind of went with it and then, um, then we, we we ran a uh, like a workshop with the execs, so they got a chance to work with Lego Series Play. That was a big mm-hmm. help, right? So they, then, you know, as again, as I say, you know, where you you've got people who sort of um, really need to perceive something, they need to experience it. You know, they need to they need experience it with their senses, and they got a strong sense in preference. I think they that that helped move us forward. You know, and get a commitment from the from the executive team, and then we started to sort of deploy it, um, this idea through all hands calls. We ran a pilot. You know, then we had a, you know, we had a bit of a coalition of the willing, I guess. You know, uh, and that enabled us to sort of push it out across the organisation. You know, so um, probably quite a lot of work went into, you know, setting us, I suppose, setting ourselves up for having a chance of success. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's so valuable because I heard of failed pro- company-wide projects because the leadership team wasn't enrolled and didn't understand and didn't buy into the method. So I think it's very important to show them, especially when it's something rather unorthodox 
um, like Lego Serious Play. Agreed. And, 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 and let's face it, you know, you, leaders, uh, senior leaders in businesses, middle managers, people in the front line, they're busy. Like, you know, they're not stuck for things to do. You know, they're, they're trying to service our customers. You know, they're trying to, they're trying to give, give a, a brilliant experience. You know, they're dealing with organizational change. They've got a whole lot of stuff yeah. on the pretty full they're plans playing. card, right? And then, and then we're, we're, we're bringing along something that's really quite conceptual, you know? So, yeah. um, so I mean, fair play to our, our, our people, you know, they, they, they came, they, they really came with us. And, and some of our people loved the fact that there wasn't an, a clear output, you know, yeah. because, you know, I'm not alone in thinking that, you know, that, that, that the sort of complexity of some of the organizational action that we, you know, attempt to engage in, you know, our, our perception of the predictability of the future is probably overstated in, 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 in quite a lot of cases. And, you know, even where we've got a very, you know, sort of orthod, orth, well, structured, let's say, you know, plan, act, kind of analysis, you know, think, then, do kind of strategy process playing out, you know, often when we look back at the end of the three-year or the five-year period, you know, implementation, execution rates, they're quite modest, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, you know, there is a balance, I think, between people needing this sort of perceived confidence and, and 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 sort of integrative tool of planning and i'm not suggesting planning isn't important but um there needs to be i think a balance between that and the acceptance that there's a lot of things that are changing that we just can't control and we can't necessarily predict so having something like purpose that's a bit more consistent over time mm -hmm. you know particularly in a period of high volatility it's i think it's yes useful, you know? yeah the um the overall purpose i i totally agree and also to the fact how important it is to connect um the individual's purpose to the organizational purpose to avoid attrition and still i i regularly hear it from um from leadership teams that when we suggest to design a workshop and to start with purpose and to connect the company values to the individual values of the participants, we really get a pushback. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we don't have time for that. Who's interested in the people's values? And they need to understand the company's values and the company's purpose, and that's good enough. What would be your argument? Um, or yeah, to to those leaders, why do you think is it important, um, and where do you see the benefits now after the project is done? Yeah, no, it's it's a it's, it's a great question, and 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 I don't want to claim that that, that, that I know the answer uh, really to this, but um, I suppose my view is if there's a significant sort of you know incongruence, if you like, between the organizational purpose and an individual purpose, I think that'll play out over time, you know, so um, in a way that is, may well result in, you know, employee exiting from the business or, you know, sort of discretional effort or, you know, something like that be, 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 be being influenced or affected. Um, I, would, I, would, I would caveat that though by saying, you know, I mean, how, how much do people know about the purpose? You know, really, you know, I, I mean, our organization population, you know, I, I, could, I couldn't tell you the, 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 the mean age or anything, you know, of, of, of the man, or even I suppose, you know, that there's a implication that as you get older, you know, you know more about your purpose because I don't think that's a given either. Um, that, uh, you know, exploring your individual purpose is something that, you know, typically I don't think we do a huge amount of. Uh, so I was aware, and this did happen, you know, that some people through this exploration, you know, became more conscious, you know, that there was some disconnect between the, maybe not so much their purpose and our organization's purpose, but maybe their purpose and their role mm. and, and that was curious you know because I spoke to a few people about that and, and I knew that was a possibility going into it we knew that was a possibility going into it and, and, and we took a view that hey that's that's not a bad thing you know because if we learn that and 
and and there's another role for this person that 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 is a better fit you know then that's something that's good for them to know and it's something that's good for us to know um but uh yeah i I think there's 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 a sort of there's a a value in 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 knowing this a little bit more you know for both the organization and 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 the individual and uh, we were willing to we were willing to take the risk of what knowing more might might result in and i I would say an an, an ancillary benefit i probably underestimated and maybe others did too i don't know is that you know when you when you try and build a a model of your individual purpose and 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 uh you know, we were supported in doing that in a, in a really admirable way. But um, you then tell the story, you know, to your colleagues, you know. So one of the things that we found was people coming to us and saying, you know, I've worked with that person for 10 years, you know, and I learned, you know, a lot of new stuff about them that I never knew, you know. Um, and, and I think that brought a lot of connectedness, you know, because you tell your story, then you listen to the other stories of the people on your table. And, and, and I think... I thought that was quite powerful, actually. Mm. You know, I, again, that's probably something going into the project. I didn't envisage, you know, um, the potential value creation that, 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 that rolled out of that. Yeah. Can you see a, a real difference now how in terms of collaboration, productivity, efficiency? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell, isn't it? You know, these things are great sort of notoriously difficult to, to pin down to a particular project, you know, cause we were, it's like we were doing a bunch of other things as well, you know, um, and during this period. And it's funny, I had a chat with the board about this project yesterday, you know, and they were asking, you know, or about outputs, you know, they were interested in, in, in outputs, you know, accepting of the fact, I think that, that, that we hadn't made any self commitments, uh, specific commitments around outputs and, you know, during this period, like we have seen, you know, a, a real slowdown in attrition, but I don't know to what extent I can claim, you know, we can claim that that's uh, down to this project because we've engaged in a few other things as well. That and it can be the world situation. It can be the end of the Labor pandemic, market the beginning of a war. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, do you know what I mean? And, you know, you see two, two, or, two or three improved months and you yeah. think, well, that's great, you know, but, but we don't really know. And I mean, that's it you know another interesting point you know about these types of projects and and not just these you know other ones that have you know potentially longer um you know their consequences you know unfold over a longer period of time when do you measure it you know do you say you know do you measure it you know you measure at the end of the workshop right you'll get a certain sort of you can access certain data you know you, you, you measure it 30 days 60 days 90 days six months later you know different things unfold and and it's hard to say to what extent you know people have stepped onto a path as a result of this interact yeah exactly so i think you know there's a i'd love to understand more about you know our, our people and how how they've used their experiences and how that's had implications around say cross functional collaboration which was one of the challenges that was identified for us through the project and um, by having this type of engagement um, but you know the sort of data collection effort mm. in that is is not simple. Uh, yeah. So uh, so I think it's um, I think we have a we have a broad positivity about what we've what, what what we've achieved. It looks like it's contributed to a range of things that are helpful for our people and our organisation, and we don't exactly know quite what they are or how like a particular quanta is that we can apply to this. Yeah, beautiful. And I, I have one more question regarding the, the enrollment, and then I would love to take a step back to actually talk about the process to find a facilitator. All right, sure. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking of um, another pushback that I have experienced, which was a pushback from, and that's related to what you mentioned with respect of the impact that throughout this process, some of the participants, some of the staff members realized that maybe a different position would be more aligned to their purpose. So another pushback that I'm aware of is from the participants that the mistrust, or at least the fear that what if 
it comes out that my values and my purpose is not aligned to the company purpose and values, will this kind of project be a reason for to lay me off? Right, got you. So how do you how do you deal with it? Or was it a general pre assumption that you do need to have this trust already? Um, a good company culture, a healthy company culture in the first place to start that? Yeah, got to no, it's, a, it's, it's a really, really interesting question. Probably was a concern for some people. Um, you know, what's the implication, I suppose, of yeah, this, you know, a perceived incongruence, if you like. Um, and I suppose there was, it, it's, so there's probably a few things that that, that played out that, 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 maybe, that maybe mitigated that. I mean, the, when we completed the workshop um, and the workshops probably like the face-to-face -face workshops at least were maybe about 50 people so let's say six tables of eight or something like that uh, so on the piece that related to your individual purpose the storytelling that you engaged in you you only engaged them with seven other people and um, and I think one of the things we have attracted um, you know over the years and insights has been around for, 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 for 30 years. We are, we've got really nice people, you know, it's, it's like, you know, um, and, and in the workshops that I did get a chance to speak at the beginning, you know, this is one of the things I said, you know, it's, it's so like you look through our onboarding kind of feedback and that, and, 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 and not to say there, there aren't always things we could do better, but, um, you know, consistent comment is just, you know, so welcomed into this environment. Everyone's so nice. Is everyone really this nice? Can people really be this nice? You know, and um, you're like, yeah, they, they are. And guess what? There's two of them, one sitting on either side of you and another four or five around the table. So I was trying to encourage people, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're trying to express the meaning and what you've built, go as far as you're comfortable, but mm. maybe go a wee bit further and, you know, and, and trust the fact that these people are really, you know, nice and, and, and they're here, you know, they've got good intentions and, 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 and they, want, they want to support you. And I was surprised, you know, by some of the openness that I, I you know, I experienced myself and it encouraged me to be more, more, more open, even particularly, you know, when you're, you're, you're talking about something that you haven't maybe thought about much, you know, so your, your thoughts are, let's say, you know, they're not formed in a, in a very uh, mature kind of pattern. And so I would say that mitigated it. We, we tried to give permission. They're probably sharing in relatively small groups. And then we used a couple of mechanisms where we were bringing the models together, you know, to represent uh, organizational purpose. Each workshop elected what we called a brick keeper, you know, who literally took the bricks home from the model, you know, that was built in the uh in, in their workshop they were elected by that group and we brought a model but well, we brought a model from every workshop i think it was 14 workshops uh so we were all across the globe you know and um, somewhere in our home location in dundee somewhere in you know singapore we had uh, berlin amsterdam austin you know we had a we had a, we had a range south africa you know, they were all across uh, all across the world and then some online so these people actually brought um, um in the final session with the leadership group these brick keepers they brought the models to the leadership group and told the story they were like the custodians of that workshop story and um, but that really focused on organizational purpose it, it, you know at that stage we weren't focusing on the individual so that was a bit that was shared with everyone so if on the individual purpose part in terms of your question on how people felt exposed potentially and um, all of the models were uploaded um, to rise which was accessed you know through our our, our sharepoint our, our internet i guess and um, so anyone that was in your workshop could i guess look at your model we asked people anyone who doesn't want their model up there no problem like no problem like i i don't know if we had anyone who said mm -hmm. and if we did no problem you know it, it wasn't about exposing anyone and um, so we didn't get too much you know direct challenge to that whether we got you know you know a more sort of guarded version of people's expression it was probably difficult to know but um i think we the way that we 
worked with it and the way that we worked as colleagues. I suspect if we did something more to build on this, I think a lot of people would go even further mm. than they have. Um, and I think that speaks to the culture of the organization, um, yeah. you know, to be, to be able to do that. But it was, in some ways, as a leader in the business, you know, it was a, it's a huge listening exercise, you know, it's a massive listening exercise, you know, where, you know, you, you, we've just got to know our people a bit better. And, and, you know, that enables us to be able to say, well, how are we, you know, what is it that we're doing in order to, you know, contribute to the enhancement of our ability as an organization to progress against this purpose in a way that's enhancing the lives of our people, you know, and I think that was, mm. that was quite useful. So basically you you now have more data to, to nurture the conversations that are happening in the leadership level um, about the strategy, the next steps, so that you can basically align it back from top down with the bottom up findings. Yeah, I mean, I guess that, you know, that's, I know we talked about this briefly in our sort of pre-conversation, you know, around, um, you know, inclusive strategy process and, 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 and what that might mean for where we're about to go into our, our next strategy period, 23 to 26 or 23 to 28, you know, whatever it ends up being. Um, so I think we created a stepping off point, you know, that was quite different from the stepping off point we would have had had we not done this project mm. um, and part of that is yes we have quite a lot of uh, data most m m m tended to focus in terms of like the sort of data analysis and understanding more around the actions that people focused on you know because one of the questions that we asked as a sort of stimulus was about if we could be more on you know how could we be more on purpose as an organization you know what are the things that you think that we might do um, and our people responded, you know, we got, sort of, I don't know, you know, let's say 400, circa 400 responses around that, um, which you can, you know, engage in a sort of qualitative analysis and start to look into that a bit more and, and try and see what they see, you know, mm -hmm. so some of which, you know, sort of told us, gosh, there's some things that we need to do, like, you know, that are like direct responses to what's been said. And we've already kicked off some of those things or um, and we did pretty much as soon as we came back from uh, billand which is it was our final session at legoland um and other ones you know are more sort of almost like second order learnings you know where we said we haven't properly provided information about how our business model works you know because mm -hmm. some of the proposals suggestions we've got are would create a huge amount of risk in our business model and 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 uh, therefore you know, the actions that we need to engage in is how do we educate the um, our, our new people coming in in particular better around, hey, this is how, you know, we create value both for our customers and this is how we retain value in our organization in order to manage long-term sustainable growth, you know. So mm -hmm. that, 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 was, that, that is really valuable information. We didn't, we haven't analyzed a lot really around personal individual purpose. I mean, um, probably saw that as being a, a, a bit more of a, a personal conversation perhaps between individuals and maybe their line managers, you know, where they say, where they might say, you know, actually love this company. In fact, that's one of the measures, you know, I love, I love my job and I love this company that we took, which we, which we saw move forward significantly. Um, what, but, you know, hey, I may be interested in a role that's more over there. And mm. you know, I, I think that's a really healthy conversation to have, you know, yeah. because um, we would rather, you know, with the talented people that we have, of which we have a lot, um, we'd rather find a way to um, make that happen than them to find that solution outside of our business. You know? Yeah, like in a relationship, right? You, you want to, to find ways to navigate it early on instead of having an ugly breakup at some point because of Could unspoken be frustrations. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, 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 that goes, um, you know, it's a, it's a rich data set, but, you know, um, I think one of the things you'd mentioned to me before was about, you know, learnings and, and, and probably that there's a learning for me around, around the data, how we kind of, how we resourced 
our ability to engage with that data? Do we have do we have enough people working on that? And I think that's probably something that maybe we we could have done differently. You know, mm. is that you know we could have we could have um, pointed maybe more of our research team or something like that. Yeah, yeah you know, we 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 we, we we created a, we knew we create a lot of qualitative data um and you know maybe we could have we could extract more value out of it than we did but it's you know this is july right you know yeah. so it's not you know we're not two years down the line you know so yeah. there's an opportunity for us uh, to um resource that up coming into our strategy engagement and it's interesting because from a if you want to create a system on how to analyze the data beforehand, this means that you need some sort of information on what you're seeking and what you're finding, which is not the way you started um, the mission in the first place. Yeah, um, but then on the other hand, I can only imagine that with the work that you're actually doing with your product, which is analyzing answers to certain questions and um, deriving personality types mm -hmm. um, that analyzing data is your strong strong suit anyway. Um, we certainly have resource and capability in 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 that area. It, it, it just wasn't pointed at this project, yeah. you know, and we've got a great learning development team and and, and they were really supportive of of our of this endeavor and they helped work with our brick keepers in order to prepare help them prepare for um, presenting to our um, presenting to our leadership team yeah. um, but you know that that, that that was three people you know and, and, and you know the just the quantity of data is just, just too much so uh, I think we, we do have that and, and that's something yeah we, we would like to we would like to ex sort of make a bit more out of um, because there's a there's a lot of really rich information in there and, and and you're right we we don't have a sort of deductive framework you know that, that, that we'd be working with um and i i did spend a lot of time myself and i know others did too you know just reading what our people were saying and 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 you know playing around on on mural or whatever to say well, that's you know that's interesting and that seems to have come up a lot and like do we have a cluster and what does that mean and mm -hmm. You know, and, and and that that was quite helpful. You know, when we when we brought the groups together in, in Billund, you know, we really challenged our leaders to listen. You know, we were like, this is this is a day for listening. You know, your questions, you know, your your the words you're going to use today, we want them to be contributing to your ability to understand what our people are telling us through this uh, mechanism. And uh, they they were fantastic. They really really came with us on that. And um, I think that. The next day we had an open space and uh you know we we enabled we 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 provided the opportunity um to for those leaders to you know talk about what they felt they'd learned and and that that drew us to particular you know outcomes at that point that enabled us to take some actions that made it this wasn't only an exercise in exploration you know some of the things we've experienced you know, we've now gone up to the telescope, we've looked and we've seen some things and we're saying, well, we're going to do something about some of those things. Mm -hmm. um, an interesting challenge, I mean, it may be interesting, I, I think it's interesting. At the, at the end of every session, we ask people, like without, without any permission of anyone else, write down an action that you could do, you know, that would move this organization even in the tiniest increment that they can move this organization in a more on-purpose direction. And, um, you know, I'd sort of pushed out myself at a couple of the, 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 the global calls that we had. You know, how, how are you getting on with that? Because I felt that, you know, if, if you're looking at this as a sort of precursor to a potential mechanism for change, you're saying, well, if everyone is, is, is sort of waiting for the leadership group to, to make these big changes, mm -hmm. and, and, and and behind that, all these little changes, you know, that, that have like Im implications for rituals and routines and stuff, you know, the, the way that we sort of culturally ex um, express our work as, as, as an organization. And um, if they don't happen, for me, is very limited, you know, in terms of our ability to, as a predictor of our ability to change. 
Um, so I did challenge that, and that's probably something we'll continue to look at because if we had 410 of these, I mean, my basic view was if we had 410 of these and like 30, 60, 90 days down the road, 40 of them had been completed, it tells me our change readiness is pretty limited. And, and if it was 350 of them, it would tell me our change because it's, it's no, we can't just be waiting for someone else to change. You know, no matter what your responsibility is, you're going to have a role in the change, you know? Especially because nobody nobody likes to be told to change. No. no. But it feels good to change um, in our own ways and to have agency. Yeah, no, so, I, I, I think that's fair. Yeah. And it's indeed a very nice uh, way to measure it, the readiness to change and how these small ideas are actually implemented. Um, yeah, and so to celebrate them with. across the organization. Yeah, it's, so it's something we continue to play with, and we're not. I say play with because I, you know, we haven't sort of taken any kind of di yeah. directorial action around it. You know, we just we just said you know, just kind of try to repeat that. You know, more or less what you said. You know, it's just like if we're if we're agreeing, we want we want the organization to be better, and um, which we appear to be, um, and we're agreeing that we all have a role in it. And you, you've specifically nominated a particular action that you say you can you can do mm -hmm. um if you haven't done that that's probably not help, helping you know yeah. so uh I, I think that's an interesting sort of line for us to continue to go down and i know i, I you know i took a change action myself from uh, my workshop that i attended as a participant i took a change action myself from the the leadership workshop in billing I'm working on both those actions. I haven't completed those actions myself, you know. So I'm, I'm like, I'm very, very aware of of, of, mm. of my own um, responsibility, you know. Um, and yeah, I guess I hope others are making similar progressions. And then also to to lead by example and to create this empathy that uh, how much is actually feasible and what what of a commitment is maybe too much. Um, yeah, because we, we tend to be overconfident in workshops because there's just there's so many hormones and um, and happiness that um, back at work, we realize that we might have misjudged our own capabilities. Yeah, and no, and, 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 and that's easily recognizable, certainly in yeah. our organization. I mean, we are, like I said, you know, right from the start, you know, recognize that hey, there's this clear connection between us and you know, this aspirational purpose, you know, so it, as an organization ourselves, we, we, we have really, you know, meaningful ambition around, you know, how do we create this world? How do yeah. we create this world, you know? Yeah. And, um, and that can be a challenge, you know, because there are so many things that we could do. Uh, and, 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 and at times, you know, it's, it, it's sort of having the experience, wisdom, capability cohesion as an organization to be able to uh, move from all the things that we could do to the things that yeah. we actually will do <laughs> you know and that's a you know that's a sort of oscillating relationship I think between what we aspire to and what we can do but um yeah it's a challenge it's a challenge for sure and um you just mentioned the open space where the um, leadership could also share what um what possibilities now they see emerging? What was the most um, surprising, maybe, observation? Ooh, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, we, one of the ones that I found surprising, so there's a, there's, there's a, um, when we talk about creating a world where people truly understand themselves and others, right? Um, like what does creating a world mean, right? So that was one of, you know, what might that mean? You know, it's, you know, it's quite a, it's a broad statement, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and what we found is that, you know, we probably did as a, you know, majority connect with scale in some way, you know? So, you know, this, you know if we're creating a world, you know, that it's probably, probably talking about quite a lot of people, not a mm -hmm. small number of people, right? Um, and, and, and I think that, that led us into some conversations about, you know, how we like deploy our profile, you know, mm. because, uh, you know, our, 
I think our, our profiles is, is, is widely regarded as one of the, the best that profiles out, out there, right? Um, and, and it's, you know, we're not a low cost provider. That's, that's not what we do, you know? And, um, you know, we're looking to provide the, the best offer that we can to our, to, 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 to our customer in terms of quality and um, in terms of bringing that sort of true understanding and so on. Um, so we, we, we got into some interesting debates about that, that uh, you know, the potential tension, you know, between mm-hmm. scale, uh, you know, and being uh, a differentiated, you know, a, 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 you know, a provider that's differentiating product on the basis of quality, not on the basis of cost, because it has some implications for well, who can afford it, frankly. Yeah. Um, so that was that was really interesting. And we, we, ha- and we have a foundation connected to insights that we use to deploy um, like profiles and workshops, services free of charge. You know, to people who are, um, you know, who can't afford it, yeah. right? Uh, and that that's quite that's that was quite a curious sort of um, contrast in a sense because, so you know, that is accessible to our practitioners, it's accessible to our clients. You know, it's yeah. not just accessible to our employees. You know, we have aspirations to give away a lot of profiles, right? And um, but our 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 actual delivery in terms of how many profiles we manage to give away is a bit bit more modest than we would expect. So, um, so that's created a really interesting avenue for us to think and talk about because um, we're considering, yes, we probably um, are looking to continue to, to be at this sort of quality differentiated end of, of, of the market and continue to improve our profile and, and the services connected to it. But also we probably want to try and grow this foundation, you know, mm-hmm. so that, you know, social enterprise charities or yeah. you know, these types of endeavors are being, you know, can benefit from, um, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, being inspired to make a positive difference through improved self-understanding. Yeah. That was, yeah. that was interesting and probably a bit unexpected for me. Maybe it was, mm-hmm. maybe it was expected for others, but I, I certainly thought that was uh, a surprise. And what I like about this example is that it triggered a conversation that could have Come, that could have scripted, could have been scripted. The question of how do we scale our um, our product, how do we access new territories, new markets, could be a very clear action item on a regular standard 100%. strategy conversation for a board. And it wouldn't have led to this depth of um, conversations because now it, there was a story attached to it. Yes, no, that, that's and a, it that's came a, from within. Yeah, that's that's a that's a lovely way of putting it, Miriam. I think, you know, I mean, some of the yeah, that's right. Some of the some of the conversations that we got into, we we got into, we could have got into through a pretty orthodox process. Not all, but certainly some of them. And um, but we were definitely coming at them from a different place. And the, you know, I talk a lot about texture, you know, but the sort of texture of the conversation felt really different mm, you know, yeah. than, 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 than it would have done if I said, you know, hey, we want to grow by 20%. So, you know, how can we do that? What market, what geography, yeah. you know, yeah. um, so those conversations happen in, 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 you know, in a commercial endeavor and, and ours is a commercial endeavor, but, but, um, but yeah, the, the, the route to them was because now they're purpose driven. And I think that's a, so the on purpose, um, as from our conversation now, how I see it, kind of provided the ground to have a conversation how to achieve these rather standard goals, but per, from a purpose driven perspective. Yes, yeah, so I think which that's is way, beautiful. Yeah, that's a, that, that is a, that, that's an interesting way to look at it. And, and again, it was, didn't know that that, 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 didn't really know that's the way that it might, it might play out, but yeah, definitely elements of it play out like that because, you know, I think that the sort of our ability, you know, the challenge that we have around, you know, sort of translating the, the sort of conceptual ideas that relate to, you know, strategy in terms of, you know, what is the future we're trying to create sort of thing um, and the actions that we're going to have to take every day, you know, the things yeah. that we're going to, you know, how do we connect that in a meaningful way for our people um it's it's 
I think it's connected in a far more emotive way um, through purpose and through understanding the impact of our actions, you know, yeah. how they contribute towards progress towards our purpose rather than, you know, in a more sort of perfunctory way, you know, which is, you know, quite, quite orthodox, I suppose. The challenge, actually, one of the challenges I think that sets for us strategically is that we don't, we haven't understood, you know, comprehensively, which, because it's hard, we haven't understood comprehensively what is the impact of the work that we do, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, you go back to that idea, you know, create a world where people truly understand themselves and so on. I mean, we're, we're deployed, you know, we're, people are engaging in our offering, you know, which is a mixture of, 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 of content, you know, we, we have, we, we have the discovery profile, but there's other content that relates to that leadership, team effectiveness, stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, services like, you know, kind of delivery process, P people access that, but, you know, we've got a lot of practitioners that sit in clients, you know, so they're facilitators that actually work for the client that they, they don't, they don't work for us. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's them that, that deliver the work mm. or we've got, licensed practitioners, you know, who, 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 um, you know, may be part of a small consultancy or a larger organization who also, you know, take our content and, and, uh, and use it, but they're all using it for so many different things, you know, because it, you know, it really is quite adaptable, you know, mm -hmm. because you know, it's like that sort of starting point of, if I understand myself and, and, and the, the way I am a bit better in terms mm -hmm. of my preferences, and it, that'll help me engage with Miriam in a different way. Um, and we may be collaborating towards a particular outcome. Those outcomes are so varied, you know. And um, so our ability to understand that and communicate that back to our people is probably an interesting strategic challenge for us because it tells us, well, where are we today in terms of the yeah. impact that we're having? And then what's aspirational in, uh, for us in terms of how we can increase that? And it almost sounds like this next layer of the onion. Right? So it was first uh, you and your people. Um, how? What's our purpose? How do we relate to it? The next layer is those who are actually using our product um, to facilitate it for other teams. Um, and then the final layer would be those teams who are filling out the profile. How does it affect their work? Yeah. Kind of the end user. Um, the, and then you have yeah. all these layers of purpose and they must, in the end, they must be aligned, right? You know, it's a fascinating thought, you know, and, 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 um, and, and to be completely fair, certainly not one that I've, I've, I've had um, and others in the project may well have done, you know, but uh, the idea of like extending this type of mechanism, you know, more broadly into our ecosystem, I think is a really fascinating idea mm -hmm. because you know certainly I have had the thoughts reflecting after this um, this uh, project that although I tend to I, I tended to think of our purpose as you know the pur insights purpose, I probably had a you know a, a boundary around it was the, that was the organization. Uh, so I was thinking about our people. We're actually thinking about the way that that you know purpose might be um, progressed towards or, or achieved, if that's a if, if that's a sort of meaningful aspiration. Um, and I do think about it more in that sort of ecosystem kind of territory, thinking, well, actually, you know, we're we're a we're a small bit. I'm not saying we're not significant, but we're a small. We're 520, you know, but we have some north of 10,000 practitioners or something like that, you know, so that's, it's a lot more people, you know, yeah. um, and it's a lot more, uh, you know, resource and capability in order to impact on that. And um, so the thought of trying to find a way to engage them in this type of project uh, that they might find interesting and valuable isn't one that I'd had, but uh, I think it's a really, yeah, it's a really, that's a really interesting idea. Thank you. Yeah. Pleasure. <laughs> Yeah. Um, from your experience, what makes a workshop fail? In my experience, 
I would say, I mean, there's a, there, there's a bunch of things that can go wrong, you know, that are, 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 are pretty, you know, mechanistic that, you know, every, everyone would be probably quite familiar just in terms of having the right, having the right room and having the right size for what you're trying to achieve, you know, and all that, all that sort of thing. Um, so I'll talk about that. Um, where I think you're engaging in like an sort of explorative work like this, I think there's a real um, challenge around, you know, what's the what's the right level, you know, what's the right level of stretch for different people within the within the within the room, and how do you how do you access that in a way that you know works for as many of the people in the room as you possibly can? Uh, so I think what can make a, a a workshop, let's say, fail or be less impactful is if it's for me if it's too paint by numbers then it you know you don't you're, you're sort of you're kind of you're kind of corralling people down a uh, yeah. down a lane that's a bit like a, a bit like try to go through passport control you know <laughs> it's just uh you know it, 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 it there's not a lot of learning going on and um, and i think if it's too opaque you know it it, it just you have a very small number of people that will go with you um, mm. So I think there's a real skill for facilitators. And again, like I say, we, we, we were lucky. When, when I originally was in, envisaging this project, I thought I'd be quite involved kind of up front, uh, but it became apparent pretty quickly that that wasn't right. And actually, I think it was much better that I, that I wasn't. Um, and our, our facilitators did a fantastic job of ch sort of challenging, stretching, providing some breadcrumbs, challenging stretch, you know, without particularly without having a context of we're going in this direction, you know, which which they had to live without. And um, so I think having the ability to do that is is just is, is just critical. Um, and the other thing that I I like to see is um, I like working with facilitators who've got good understanding of like, you know, how different tools and frameworks and so on might be deployed and you know but they are really trying to get under the skin of the the context of the organization you know and the, the, at that explicit time mm -hmm. and um, what the purpose of the project is um, and I think when I'm looking at what can cause an issue I would probably again what I would see is not being able to flex between you know, that moment where it's going slightly off piece, but it's worth going off piece. Mm -hmm. And it it's going off piece, but it's not worth going off piece. You know, that's yeah. that's a really difficult thing uh, for, for for a facilitator to, to put their finger on. And I, th I, th I thought our guys did that really well. Um because you've got 50 people in the room, right? You know, it's 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 really, really easy to be a bit derailed. Yeah. Um and before you know it it, 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 it then requires a bunch of other elements of your workshop needing to be compressed and so on. So um, there are a couple of things that I would see. You need a good cultural fit, I think, with facilitator. Um, that's not a scientific process for me. You know, that that is that is a kind of judgment call around um, partly a about what you perceive as their ability to flex around the range of personalities and ways of doing, um, as well as, uh, you know, the sort of capabilities of the tools. Yeah. And um, thank you for bringing uh, the topic on because I want to come back to it. Um, how did you choose the final facilitator? So you said it is kind of a cultural fit. It's more about what I understand, uh, the questions they're asked and how much they try to understand the context and the organization. But did you have a process or did you have, yeah, what was your? So, so I had a, what, what I had initially was, um, you know, uh, an intention as a high level conceptual framework around um, exploration of you know around exploration of purpose and what that might look like and then I was thinking about different tools or mechanisms if you like that, that, that we might use um, uh, storytelling was something that, that, that I looked at and thought about um, there were other sort of more kind of art oriented expressions you know that I had 
thought in, about also and sort of kicked the tires a little bit with and then rejected. Um, so Lego seemed to, Lego Series Play seemed to, you know, sort of bring together a few of the things that I wanted to achieve. So I read, I didn't know anything really about it. Um, uh, so I read, I read a few books and, and I was still, I still felt quite, um, I felt like my understanding of it was a bit sterile. So I literally went onto LinkedIn and reached out for maybe a dozen facilitators um, who, you know, were, I think, I, th I think they were all in the UK. They, 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 might, they might have been European, maybe UK. It, it was areas that were connected where we had a bunch of people. Mm. It might, one of them might be North American. Um, and basically said, you know, I'm really interested in this. I don't know much about it. I've, I've read a bit about it. You, you appear to be a bit of an expert in this. Would you be open to having a conversation? Um, so that was, that was pretty informal. 90% of them probably came back and said, sure, you know, no problem, which was which was awesome. And I hadn't said, hey, we're about to engage in a massive project. You know, I said we were thinking about doing something, you know, um, and they were all really open um, and quite uh, curious and, you know, shared. And, you know, it was really quite a, felt like quite a kind of pay it, pay it forward type of way of, of engaging. So I thought that was, that, that was wonderful. Um, one of the facilitators I met during that process had said, probably the only one who said this, I think it's a really interesting idea you've got, um, but I don't think that I'm ready to manage a, a project that looks like that. Um, but I know somebody who I think would be, um, and 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 that that's how I, how I came across Sean, and he was yeah he he does he accredits a lot of people in Lego Series Play, and actually then his name came up like three four times you know, um, yeah. and in that interim period he dropped me a note and said, hey, we should have a chat. So when, when we had the initial chat, what I found was some of the things I was looking for. So he had like he had a sort of ambition around like extending the application of the, of, of, of the method, right? Um, he, he seemed to have quite a um, pragmatic view on, 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 on what it could do and what it couldn't do, you know, because sometimes, you know, we, we, you know, we just, you've got a hammer and everything looks like a nail, you know? <laughs> um, so that was good. Um, definitely, I could see that he had an ambition to deliver something really, you know, uh, special and was willing to challenge himself, probably put himself in a pretty uncomfortable position around that, which I liked. Um, he had some ideas around, around strategy process and different things like that, you know, some of which I was interested in, some of which I was, wasn't quite so clear on how they might apply. Um, so that got us into the initial stages and, and then it was, it was a bit of a kind of iterative back and forth in terms of how he thought it might work and how I thought it might work. Mm. Um, and then brought him up, I brought him up uh, to do a kind of, not quite a pilot, but a taster with um, the executive team, which was great. I thought he dealt with it really well, you know, and he had there was some like interesting moments, you know, where there was some challenge and, you know, so on in the room and, uh, I could see that he he was a good reader of the room and he had a good ability to articulate um ideas that would both like reinforce and or challenge some of the things mm. that were coming into the room and um, so you know when you put all those things together I, I, I thought you know this this looks like a good fit well he was um you know I'm sure forgive me for saying this we see said he was quite focused on outputs and, 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 and I think that that was, um, you know, it was probably a bit challenging, you know, from a design perspective, I was really very resistant, uh, uh to, to even wanting to talk about that, you know, mm. um, and you know, even when we were sort of defining aims, my aims, I think he, you know, I remember described quite acceptably as, as, Flabby, I think were the words you used, um, which were, which was 
not wrong. You know, he, he wasn't wrong. That's what I was saying. But uh, you know, I suppose I had a, a a perspective that you know we needed to build quite a lot of flex into the way that we we set out our our our, our sort of overarching goals because. The, the narrower we went, I thought the more that we would direct people. Mm. And what looked like, what good looked like for me was that as close to every person in the organization could say that they individually and subjectively had a really meaningful experience around exploring their individual and group purpose, whether we ended up with something that had to go in the bin at the end of it as an organization or something that we could leverage value from was of secondary importance to me. Um, mm. And that was not easy for, I don't think that was easy for Sean. I think, that, I think in many ways, I think that made his job harder. I bet it did. And I, I'm just amazed by the, the level of trust that uh, you had in the process and in the organization. To say, okay, if it's if it's a meaningful process for for the people, then someone even more meaningful might come out of it. Mm -hmm. And this leads me to a next question. Um, and I'm not expecting to speak numbers, but I would be curious in how you designed or came up with a budget for such a project. With a because at the end of the day, you need to put aside or you need to agree with the leadership on a certain amount yeah yeah and yeah i think how do you what is the process of coming up with a budget for something yeah. where you cannot say that it's a real investment yeah that's right well exactly i mean and you think like how do you you know the the assumptions that go into the construction of what we would consider a real investment do mm -hmm. exist you know yeah uh, so um Yeah, I mean that that was that there was probably a bit of an act of faith about that. Um, I think the chief exec had an important role there. You know, um, she was, she, you know, she's you know quite high level intuition, and you know, I think had a sort of feel that this um, this would be beneficial. Uh, I think the the exec team themselves, because they also you know ultimately signed off on it. Um, I think I would also say they were, you know, they they took a position, you know, that um, had risk in it. You know, in fact, one of the one of the pieces of, of feedback at the end of the open, you know, very honest piece of feedback at the end of the open source by one of my exec colleagues was, yeah, you know, Sandy came and talked about this two or three times, and and uh, you know, I was like, I'm not using exact words, but let's say he said I wasn't clear on what he was talking about. Um, and uh, you know he had faith in 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 what, in what we were trying to do. I suppose that you know there's a fundamental assumption within our organization that uh, by better understanding ourselves and others, we can make good things happen in the world. I, th I, th I think that's a mm. that assumption is quite you know I think it's quite prevalent in our organization. Uh, so, you know, this was connecting into that. So probably we had a bit of, um, you know, we had a bit of kind of, we, bit, we had a bit of a pitch to play on. Um, I would also say that culturally from the beginning, Insights has been an organization that has taken risks, mm -hmm. um, you know, that is willing to step outside of the conventional and do things in a way that they um, think is right for them, but is different. Um, and, you know, that's, you know, overwhelmingly had a positive outcome, but hasn't always had a positive outcome. So, you know, they've been willing to accept the risk of that. I would probably also maybe cover that by saying there's probably a sense of confidence that, you know, if we brought our people together, that would be good, too, because they hadn't seen each other for quite some time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so there was probably something around that. But no, I would... You know, I've worked in, I think I mentioned, uh, you know, I've worked in executive education in the past, you know, with organizations who are deploying pretty significant budget. And it was, this was a significant amount of money in terms of investment. And um, who would no way have considered doing this. 
you know, mm. just no way would have considered doing this. No, but they would have engaged in, I don't know, like a, a big MBA program or something like that, you know, which the measurement of value associated with that is pretty opaque in my view also, um, mm -hmm. having been engaged in them myself for many, many years. And I believe that they are worthwhile yeah. in, in many circumstances, you know. Uh, I think putting a confidence interval around how many pounds it was mm -hmm. worth to you. Yeah, that's an interesting, thank you for sharing the process and also now the very tangible, okay, what are we comparing it with? Mm -hmm. And what's the cost of something comparable? So yeah, what's an MBA program for how many people? Yeah. What's the cost? What's the cost of um, rehiring those who might have left because they don't exactly. see the purpose? It, it, I mean, it's it, we're into pretty, like I say, we're yeah. into pretty opaque ground. But yeah. you know, and, and and like I say, I'm a, a believer in education. I'm a big believer in education, and, and we invest in education you know, for our people. But um, I, I, I find some some of the, um, you know, sort of, I understand why there's a really strong uh, movement towards ROI in, in, you know, in a really broad range of of of, of acti organizational activities, including you know potentially an explorative um, endeavor like the one that we engaged in. But um, I was really trying to encourage people to say, let's just try and understand what we think. Let's yeah. try and understand what we what try. Let's try and understand what we think we learned from it, as opposed to let's try and measure what we think we've learned from it. Because even go, even if I went back to um, even if I went back to my present presentation yesterday to the board, I mean I referenced some metrics, right? But you know I I said no differently than what I would have said to you, which is. You know, here are some metrics that have improved, you know, but um, we also did a bunch of other things, you know, so yeah. I really don't know to what extent uh, that, that, that this endeavor and benefited those. But I did find, you know, that when I, when, it, when I was in a position to, you know, have conversations with people that I don't engage with regularly within the organization, they had something to say about this project, you know, um, and I've received qu quite a significant amount of communication around it. And um, the, the things that, you know, a few of our colleagues have put um, posts on LinkedIn and such, and they've probably had a lot more traffic than we would typically see, you know, and a lot of external interest, mm -hmm. and even some clients coming to us then and saying, hey, can you do this for us? You know, to which, I, you know, I'm a little bit shrugging my shoulders because, I, you know, it, you know, in theory we could, but we certainly didn't go into it with the intention of creating a product, you know? So mm. um, Interest. you know, it's, it's clearly yeah. something people are interested in. Yeah, very interesting. Also now to see the opportunities that um, that are created through that uh, second order, maybe even third order opportunities, mm -hmm. um, which then would be interesting to see, okay, where did it fit, in which budget did it fit in when you started and where would it fit in after when you ended so maybe it started as an hr budget yeah sure or a strategy budget and mm -hmm. looking back in five years could have been a marketing budget that's a yeah that's a, a product that's development a, budget yeah yeah exactly this is a, yeah this is uh this is this is a good point um and i said yeah i, said, I suppose the you know the, the the potential like combination of tools you know and like you know you know what we bring to the world around around preference and so on and and and, and what Lego Series Play brings to the world around you know it, it being a, a method that is, is really closely um, connected with the ability to explore you know abstract concepts and, you know we we are shown since the uh, since this project has become accredited as a practitioner in, 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 in our work. And, and we are having a bunch of people who are going to be accredited as practitioners in, in Lego Series Play. So we don't really know where that will go, but we're, we're almost certainly going to use it in our, um, in our onboarding uh, because one of the things we found was uh, even if you were brand new to the organization, it was a really worthwhile endeavor for you, you know, because, uh, you know, the exploration of your own purpose was as meaningful 
but you know this sort of information gathering that you know and learning that engaged in attempting to express uh, your view on our organizational purpose was impactful so uh, you know that's something that that, that that we've certainly certainly taken out of it uh, direct directly and whether you know more of our practitioners globally decide to access that type of tool as a way to complement what we do you know great but it wasn't it, it wasn't an intention but it's a useful form of innovation right and mm -hmm. uh you know that's an ongoing an, an, an ongoing um opportunity or challenge i guess depending on how you look at it i think other organizations are probably also conscious of this you know purpose and it's it, it's um it's position, you know, within the sort of employee value proposition, if you like, if we could say that, you know, mm -hmm. organizational purpose, you know, has a, is, is a component of or, 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 or a sort of overarching concept connected to employee value proposition in this kind of changing world that we live in. Um, you know, might that become more important? You know, might that, might that become a differentiator that is meaningful to people in a different way. I mean, I don't know the answer yeah. to these things. We'll see. The future will we'll tell. That's right. That's right. Wow. Thank you so much. Pleasure. No, for taking the time to share uh, to share so openly. Not at all. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm really pleased that people are interested in the in the in the work that we're doing, and um, you know, as I said throughout, uh, you know, not claiming that. That, that, that we we know all of this you know th th these are things that we we thought merited experimentation and mm. you know we were, we were willing to, to to invest in it and you know for us we think it, it it's been a really positive experience so lovely to to have the opportunity to talk about it and actually you know certainly learned a few things and got a couple of ideas just um out of your questions so it's <laughs> had a direct benefit you know so i really appreciate that Thank you, Mary. Thank you. I'm glad. And before we close, um, if someone listens to this who is maybe in a similar position as you are, who is in a leadership position of an organization and um, is thinking about starting a big project like that, what would be your recommendation or advice? Well, um, gosh, what did I what, what did I learn from from what we did um, about how to go about it? I think we spent a lot of time at the at the conceptual level, you know, trying to understand what we thought, what were the re, you know, what were the reasons why we 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 thought that this might be sort of a contrib a project that may be contributory to to our our organization's success. And I was quite, what's the way to put this? I was quite. Um, relaxed about reaching out for a range of different stakeholders and getting different frames on you know what we might do and how we might do it and what that might mean so i would encourage people to you know use the tools that are available out there to to talk to um you know um other e experts or you know people who have a range of, of of ways of of approaching this idea uh, their idea because uh i learned quite a lot from that and um, so that's one thing i would I, I would suggest and maybe another piece might be around how you challenge you know your own thinking um because we had a we had a view i think i mentioned at the start we had a view certainly myself and the chief exec we had, we had a view quite early that you know there was some kind of latent energy that could be Tap, tapped into that was there mm -hmm. that that wasn't you know that was kind of held in a box you know and we weren't we weren't opening the box you know um it was quite difficult to prove that you know um before before making an investment you know so so we did we did try and challenge our thinking around you know is it something else you know is, is it is it not this is, is this the right thing because when you choose to do something you're fundamentally choosing not to do something else and um, so we spent a bit, bit of time talking to different people and, and accepting challenge around that. Once we'd gone through that, to be honest, like we were we we went for it, you know. We did we didn't we didn't really hold back, you know. We tried to involve everyone. We didn't, you know, we 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 were able to access sufficient investment um, 
to maybe you know to do it in a way that we weren't hugely constrained um, around our um, our ability to achieve our, our, our ability to pursue our ambition of exploration. Um, so what, once we'd made the decision, I would say we went we went at it mm. in, a, in a really pretty pretty me meaningful way, um, and we didn't put a lot of pressure on either people around us or ourselves to come up with a specific outcome. And in this project, I thought that was really important. Might, might, might not be in others, um, which in some ways made them nervous, as I mentioned earlier, and in other ways it just really freed them, you know. Um, and we did get good, some good feedback about that, where where you know people felt the fact that you've said we are not defining the outcome gives mm. us confidence. You're really going to listen to what we've got to say, you know. So, uh, so I think mm, yeah, you know what you can do to free the talent you've got, you know, um, in in terms of expressing their their, their capabilities, you know, in the deployment of this kind of aspiration is that was good for us, you know, so Beautiful. maybe those three things. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thanks, Miriam. At the end of my podcast.